Uh, today we're out on a water just outside Warwick, which is quite prolific for Xander. It's run by a club, the uh, Law Anglers Canal Club, five pound day ticket, just buy it online. Bought mine yesterday and you can rock up and, and fish, fish for, these, uh, for these fish. And what I'm gonna look at today, the main things, is how to catch canal Xander when it's very cold. Today it's freezing, it's like, I think when I got up this morning it was minus one. I've been here since dawn. And I don't think it's raised much since then. It's probably about one, yeah, probably about one degree. Very, very cold, the cameraman's already moaning. Um, but there are different ways to fish for Xander, as all predatory species, when it gets very cold. They move around less, they're less aggressive. I've had two bites this morning already, seen both the fish, but they've been hanging onto the back of the lures and the, the bites were really, really delicate. So they weren't, the tip didn't go around at all. There's just a little stop in the action of the law and I struck, fish were on, got them to the surface and then they just opened their mouths, let go and they were off, which is frustrating, but you know, they're, they're biting, the fish are active, so I'm hoping we'll have a few and we can go over the techniques that I employ to catch canals under in the cold. So, how do you find the fish? Where do you go? The reason I come here is uh, Hatton Locks is because there's lots of different lock pounds. So what you've got is a big series of locks to get to the boats up the side of a hill. So psychologically, you can work a pound much better than just an open stretch of canal. From down here, I think this is one of the bottom locks, it's lots of open water. Now trying to work out in your head where you should start is a bit probably a bit daft trying to work out where to go. It's just random look, you normally cast in, unless there's specific uh, features and the, the watercraft involved behind that with, with why you'd fish there. For example, here we've got a, um, an inlet. Now today I'm not sure whether that's a good thing because there's probably cold, a lot of cold water coming in. Having said that, the canal water is quite cold anyway, so it's probably not an issue. So anyway, these pounds, they're, they're small areas in between the locks that contain the fish. They're like ponds. So you can kind of break the, break the canal down into these sections and psychologically it gives you a much better chance, I think, of catching fish because you'll just fish them out properly instead of wandering all around an open canal. Now there's a few places you might find in terms of location around these, uh, around these tracks, you might find a Xander. Up against lock gates like this that have been closed for a while, they will herd fish, bait fish in, just like pike. So you'll find them in entrances uh, around bends like this, where my feet are, so they can ambush prey fish, but they, they tend to kind of keep fish in a specific area so they can just dive in and feed throughout the winter months. So you'll find them in little schools, because of the size of the fish, they, they tend to school together. You'll catch, you'll see maybe four or five fish together. Uh, and in winter, just, just like perch fishing really, you want to kind of work an area until you start getting bites or maybe bump fish over the top of fish or whatever. And then you can start working that area a little bit more um, tightly. So look for bait fish, same as always on any waters, but in the canals. So look down the center, look for bait fish, look for bites, and then concentrate on these areas. And also look for natural holding spots, structure, uh, inlets. The thing with the inlets, um, what they'll do is create a constant stream of particles and moving water that will hold food for bait fish. So like here you've got a, um, an inlet coming in, the particles will come down in the flow and then deposit around the back here when the flow stops and that's where the bait fish should be. If they're going to shoal up they might shoal up near a, a, a food source and the zander will be hanging around there as well. These are very good especially on, on these locks where they've got an overflow which comes in from the right uh, and that creates a flow as well, and that'll deposit uh, food stuff for the, for the roach and the gudgeon and the whatever other bait fish, the bream are in here, just to pick at. So they'll hold off there, and where they're held, the predators won't be far behind. So I've moved up to one of the pounds now. As you can see, it's quite a, a concentrated area of water. Um, 
So it gives you a good feeling that you're actually going to be close to some fish, whatever you're doing. Um, there's a few. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, it's off. So I've tied on another lure after getting bitten off. So I'm back in the game. Just seen what I think was a Xander actually jump. I'll never, you never see Xander jump. It could well have been a bream, but it looked white. It looked the right shape right out in the middle here, which is a good confidence boost, I tell you, definitely on a day like today. Still freezing cold, my nose is running like a train. My hands are freezing, but the fish seem to be active. So it's got a, an inlet down here, which is pushing water through like a river. And again, it's that same kind of thing where it'll push bait fish into this area because of the food coming down, for them to feed on. They'll concentrate possibly in the deeper water just out there, but as the, the, the food is falling through the water and then the Xander, won't be too far away. You've got lots of structure on the locks at either end. On the far channel, on the far side, you've got the channel for the boat, uh, so that's slightly deeper. I'm trying to work it out in terms of the underwater geography. It's slightly deeper down here where the water runs in, as, you, as you'd expect, because in a canal mostly it's just silt buildup that gives you the different depths. Over the far side is definitely deeper, and it, and it comes up halfway across, and then kind of flattens out and then down here is a bit deeper so I think that's probably going to be uniform all the way along here apart from where the water comes in. So my technique for working these pounds is to uh, just fan cast around there's a lot of crap on the bottom today unfortunately we've had all the dead leaves drop to the bottom um, so I'll fan cast around and work out where the fish are if there are any fish wait for bumps either from bait fish or from uh, nips from Xander. The, the two bites I've had today have come from areas just off the bottom of these, uh, these inlets um, in exactly the places I'd expect to find them. Just as I'm bringing, bringing the lure over the ledge, I've had the hits. Uh, unfortunately, because the fish, are, the water's so cold and the fish are lethargic, the two bites I've had, they've held onto the, the back of the lure and as I've brought them off, I've seen the fish and they've just opened their mouths and, and it off they haven't been hooked up which is probably to do with the way I'm working it I might be working it a bit too fast although I am to get the bites is good anyway but I, they're just very delicate bites that was first thing in the morning and the temperature has come up by a degree or two uh, and as the day goes on that might make a difference so uh, once I've found the fish anyway from casting around once I've found the fish I'll then work on uh, that area more specifically different retrieves, different colour lures. So I know the fish around about that area, it's just then working out what they want. The two bites I've had have been on a 7.5 centimetre Xander Pro Shad in the UV Pearl. Uh, now the water's for a canal because the boat activity slowed down and, and so the silt's not being kicked up. The clarity is actually pretty good uh, for a canal today, uh, but you still want that contrast. And I think the, the iridescent shimmer, the UV attractiveness of these uh, ultra UV pearl finishes just works perfectly in, in these kind of conditions. I've got a number of UV different, different UV uh, finishes in my bag. I love the ultra UV lures, I find them really, really effective. Um, I've got lots of 7cm slick shads and I've got 7.5cm Xander Pros and I've got some um, critters as well, some of the, uh, the crayfish imitations. Now this seems to be working above the 7cm uh, slick shads which have got a, a shallower body profile compared to the Xander Pro so maybe they're, they're just more tuned into that kind of body profile I had no no bites on the seven centimeter slick shed so far but with anything you know that could just be just luck just that I've run it past the fish at that time so it's always worth chopping changing colors shapes speeds and everything until you find out what the fish are after but the key thing which I'm doing now is trying to work out where the fish are and once you've worked out where the fish are, then you can work out your tactics from there. This time of year on a canal situation, you want quite a sensitive rod. I'm fishing with a Street Fighter um, Finesse, and that's one to eight grams. So it's a really sensitive tip, it's designed designed for this kind of fishing all day long. These rods are great for that because they've got little extrusions down the reel seat. So you put your thumb in there and I also like to keep my finger just in front of the handle. So that as soon as there's any bump down the, down the rod, 
when you're using braid, everything will be fed back through the rod. I can feel that straight away, and it's just a reaction strike then. Oh, mate. That was some stuff on the bottom. I thought I had a fish then. And also throughout, you know, I've got a 1000 Prism X reel so that the rod's not overweighted. If I went for a two and a half, this would probably be too imbalanced to, to be comfortable. I mean, that doesn't affect in terms of how you feel for bites, but it's just being comfortable. And also because I want balanced braid, I've got a very low diameter seven pound braid here so that I've got minimum resistance when the, the, um, the lure falls through the water as well. And I can, it just feeds back perfectly. It's a really nice balanced setup, which will, will give you the information you need to find the fish and catch more fish. It's as simple as that. So, add another bite on the uh, UV Pearl Xander Pro Shad 7.5. My heart was in my mouth because I thought it was a Xander. I thought it was, uh, I'd done the job. Got all excited, but then this little beauty popped up. A little uh, pike, probably <laughs> scra scraping two pounds, pound and a half. You know, I'm being generous there maybe. Covered in leeches. So it shows you just how inactive these fish have been today, the predators. But it's nice to get a bend in the rod. It hit the lure actually surprisingly hard. So there you are. At least there's one fish in here that wants to wants to bite today. Just drop him back. Carry on with the hunt for the Xander. So I just made a switch uh, to a smaller lure. I've gone for a small spiky shad uh, on a on a three gram jig head. And I got a hell of a bite, really whacked the rod tip round. And it was this little perch. Again, I thought it was gonna be the Xander. And typically, we've come out today looking for Xander and we've caught pike and we've caught perch. Um, still freezing cold, but it just shows that the canals in the Midlands or, or wherever, you know, if you get it right, you can catch fish and get good bites and have good fun. Now all we need is a Xander, really. I don't know if we're gonna get one today because the uh, light's gonna start going soon, but we're gonna carry on, fish on, and see if we can get the trio. Let's pop him back. So on the hunt for Xander still, covered loads of water today. And I think the Zeds are just, just a little bit too cold, not interested. I think they fed earlier this morning when I first arrived and I had those two bites and lost those two fish. But the perch are biting and here's another one, just had it on a seven centimeter uh, lemon tiger ultra UV lemon tiger uh, slick shad. Nailed this one. It's a lovely little fish, nice and plump. And this one's not got leeches on, so maybe they're moving about a bit more. We found a shoal that a bit more interested in, in feeding. I think the, Z, the Zeds will come back on the feed uh, as the, the, the uh, light starts to drop. We're getting to that time now where the sun's setting, so we'll see. It'd be nice to get the triple. So we had him off um, one of the lock walls in the pound and this is where the street fighter net the telescopic net came really into its own so i'll just pop him back using it and just show you this look at that look at that with a normal landing net just drop him off if we go there we go saves just dropping him right over the edge and shocking him when he hits the bottom these things are brilliant love them absolutely love them Yeah. Okay. Bite. Let's see. Just, ooh, just walking, working this, um, working this seven centimetre slick shot. It's a Zander. Brilliant. 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 Go straight that out. Yeah. Just working that seven centimetre slick shot down this wall. Whew, at last. And he, yeah, uh, he nailed it. So for a freezing cold day when you know you struggle to catch really on days like this, the water's horrible, it's freezing cold, this is killing my hand like I say, just holding him. It's, uh, we've had a good day con considering the conditions. We've had a uh, perch, we've had a pike and then this uh, little beauty and they are beautiful fish. I love them. I can't believe that they were allowed to be electrofished out if I'm honest and I think it's a disgrace but um, 
just look how beautiful they are. They're not causing any problems. They're, they're naturalised now. So anyway, we get. I'm not supposed to say we put this one back, so I'm not going to say it because he won't go back. Uh, we'll call it call it a day. A beautiful fish to end it on.